Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Resurrection Lutheran. days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your spirit, that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant us through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws, and whose day draws near. Amen. Light. 
light one candle to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall bring salvation to Israel. God fulfills the Two candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. Gently lead them Welcome to worship. It is Sunday, December 6th, the second Sunday of Advent. Today our texts have, we have both the prophecy and the hope that we have from the prophet Isaiah proclaiming um, the one who comes, but we also have the beginning of the Gospel of Mark. This year, a uh, year, what is called the year B in the uh, worship uh, cycle, um, Mark is a different gospel. It, it challenges us to hear um, the urgency of God's presence and God's power in the midst of us in the person of Jesus Christ. So let us begin. An Advent Litany. Among the poor among the proud, among the persecuted, among the privileged. Christ is coming. And together we say, Christ is coming to make all things new. In the private house, in the marketplace, in the wedding feast, in the judgment hall, Christ is coming. And together, Christ is coming to make all things new. With a gentle touch, with an angry word, with a clear conscience, with burning love, Christ is coming. Christ is coming to make all things new. Within us, without us, among us, before us, in this place, in every place, for this time, for all time, Christ is coming. Christ is coming to make all things new.
The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together the prayer of the day. Stir up our hearts, O Lord God, to prepare the way for your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear the scriptures. The first reading is from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear, say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life.
voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for of God. This is the reading from 2 Peter chapter 3. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be dissolved. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of the persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in the accordance with his promise, we wait for the new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So also our beloved brother Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him. This ends the readings.
from the one who creates, redeems, and sustains. Amen. This is the beginning of Mark's gospel, as I shared earlier, and where the whole, in a sense, the whole intro, the whole pre, uh, prologue in Mark is one sentence. You know, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that's good news. We could also start this reflection, the sermon about John the Baptist. Here we have a person coming out of the wilderness to proclaim good news, but he's a little different. He uh, wears a camel skin uh, clothing, which is just unbelievably uncomfortable. It, uh, he eats locusts and wild honey. Uh, not a great diet, but you, you get a sense of this wildness of this man. And he comes in proclaiming in a context where he positions himself on the pilgrim route from the east side of the Jordan River. They would cross over and then go to the temple to offer sacrifice. But John is right before that. And he's offering good news to the people because here in John the Baptist, we hear the good news of God. That good news, that gospel message, which began in the Hebrew scriptures, frames the core of John the Baptist's proclamation, and it finds completion in the message and the witness of Jesus. And at the very core of that, is the purpose of John's baptism, and it's the purpose of Jesus' life. It's for to proclaim that sin has been forgiven. That phrase, that the forgiveness of sins, it becomes a defining word of God that God does not, God does everything needed to heal us in our brokenness. The brokenness that we experience in our relationship to God, with ourselves and with others, even life itself. When we experience that forgiveness that heals, our blindness is cured so that we are free to see and serve the Lord our God. In this promise, the promise of God in Scripture, and, and we experience that not only in the stories about Jesus, but in the living presence of Jesus even today. Because the promise is Emmanuel, God with us. The forgiveness of sin is at the core of all the prophecies about the Messiah and the suffering servant. Forgiveness of sin is the purpose of John's baptism in the Jordan. Because 
John has received that good news. That in forgiveness, suddenly we can be in God's forgiveness to us and for us. We can be changed in the midst of that. And he gives examples to the people and the crowds around him. Jesus, the reason why Jesus is born, the name Jesus, which means Yahweh saves, is that powerful, powerful witness that Jesus in his birth is proclaimed, but it is also proclaimed in his teaching and in his ministry. It's proclaimed in his suffering and dying on the cross. And it's even proclaimed in the new life that we have in the resurrection. Forgiveness of sins is that core message. So that's the conclusion of the sermon, but we're not finished yet. We have to ask ourselves, why is forgiveness of sins such a big deal? Why is it important to you and me and humanity and, as it is revealed, all creation? We often don't talk about sin in the way that we may have done it in the past. But sin, sin is not about just go obedience and following a set of laws. That's what I understood as a kid growing up. Sin is about separation from God. Whether we are talking about the fall of, in Genesis chapter 3, or the killing of Cain and Abel in chapter 4, or 5, or 6, or 7, or 8, or 9, Scripture is full of that brokenness that we have to face. And in that brokenness, Sin is the poison to our human spirit. It corrupts us to the point where we can no longer see God as God. And we start seeing ourselves as God. Story after story reminds us of our brokenness in the relationship, in relationships even with ourselves but especially in our relationship with others. Martin Luther, through the writings of St. Paul, reminds us that we are slaves to sin. But the good news is, is that God sees through our brokenness, does not desire for us punishment or guilt because of our sin. What God promises is redemption. Here are some scripture passages. Just just listen to these passages and pick up the theme. Isaiah 43, verse 25. I am, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. I will not remember your sins. Psalm 103. As far as the east is from the west, so far does... God, remove our transgressions from us. Micah chapter 7, verse 19. God will again have compassion on us. God will tread upon our iniquities underfoot. He will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Again, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Jeremiah 31, verse 34. And no longer shall we teach one and teach, um, no, and no longer shall each teach his neighbor and each his brothers and sisters, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive your iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent, therefore, turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. John 1, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. 
If you confess your sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. In Hebrews chapter 10, then God adds, I will remember their sins and their lawlessness deeds no more. Hebrews chapter 8. For I will be merciful towards their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. Do you get the point? God has no desire to, to deal with us in terms of punishment or the challenges that are involved. What God wants, and we hear this clearly in Jesus at the Last Supper, when he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So, I think we can get the point. Think about this. In that very first passage I shared, God forgives our sins, not just for our benefit, but for God's own sake. Why would that be? We know, you and I know what it's like if we hold on to some hurt or brokenness that has happened to us. And as we hold on to that, it just becomes toxic in our life. If that, if we can't forgive, then what we do is all of that hurt or brokenness that has occurred builds up in us. Imagine what that's like for God. With all of our sin, with all the brokenness of the whole world, with all creation for all the ages, what would that do to God? If God is holding on and resenting all of those sins and brokenness. God casts those away for God's own sake. And that's good news. And that's good news for us. But God's forgiveness and healing is only the beginning of the journey of turning, of the journey of turning of repentance. To repent is to turn our hearts back to God. To turn and receive that welcome. To turn and feel God's grace in our lives. Because when we do that, we can experience God's kingdom in a brand new way. When we hear that, it becomes joy and, and, and rejoicing in our hearts and lives. And you, this is, and I thought, it, I've preached this before and I think I've preached it before here. Repentance means to turn. And here are some prepositions. We turn to God. We turn away from sin. We turn into scripture. We turn to each other. And we turn toward the world. When we think about those five dimensions, turning to God, turning away from sin, turning into scripture, to turn with each other, and turn toward the world, we have captured the essence of what rep repentance really truly is. These five are what John is calling us to what Jesus calls us to in his own messaging. Because when we repent in this turning, when we do this, the Spirit guides us into what is next. And we can accept God's acceptance of us. We are truly embracing Emmanuel, the God with us, when we accept the promise that has been fulfilled because God's desire is to fulfill that promise. 
For this is the word made flesh. This, for this we have waited. For this Christ Jesus came to save. Amen. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. We especially pray for those who are struggling in the midst of pandemic, racial injustice, those who are struggling with being alone and, must, and sheltering in. Lead us towards a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany dis disability advocates who work for a world so work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregations who are struggling facing this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely 
Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression and gather all people into your healing embrace. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give you thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness. Teach us to continue their faithful work. Make, this, make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share that peace, if not today, with all family and friends during this time. We also want to, again, thank the congregation for its work, for your comments, your support, and the blessing that you continue to be for us as church staff and all the volunteers here at Resurrection. The blessings to you. Generous God, 
You have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. As we share communion this day, we are reminded, even in our communion liturgy, that the purpose, the good news, is that sin is forgiven. So let us remember, let us place on this altar also our own prayer of repentance so that we may too turn to God, turn away from sin, turn into scripture, turn to each other, and turn toward the world. On the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So come, Holy Spirit, upon these gifts of your church, the gift of bread and cup, the gift of the people of God gathered in so many places, but gathered in the unity of you, Christ Jesus. So bless this meal that we too are sent to proclaim and believe. As we pray in the words that our Savior has given us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Even as we wait and watch, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
God. You have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Several announcements that we want to be making uh, this Sunday. Um, one is that uh, this next week, on Wednesday, between 10 and noon, we will be having scheduling people to come in and have their pictures taken by either the Christmas tree or the Advent wreath or Christmas flowers. Um, so please check in with the church office uh, to schedule a time. We'll be setting up, you know, five minute windows so that we don't have people crossing within the sanctuary. So just give the office a call and we can schedule that for you. Also, we continue our Advent midweek services uh, with Holden Vespers, but they can be watched anytime during the week. So we just encourage you that if you can join us for Holden Vespers, sing along and participate um, in that uh, opportunity. Um, also, uh, birthdays this, this week and, and over the, uh, this past weekend. On the 4th, Ward Spradlin. On the 5th, Javane Kelms, uh, Dave Lippert, uh, and Dave Lippert. On the 6th is Bob Clare. And uh, on the 10th is Lindy Fre Fredericks, Gabriel Almagrock. So, uh, join us for that. Um, also, uh, Bible study on Wednesday, Zoom at 11. It's posted online by 6 p.m. on YouTube. High Tea and Happy Hour continues Thursdays, 4 o'clock. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about favorite Christmas stories and songs and just have some fun. So join us if you can um, for High Tea or uh, for Bible study. I think those are all the announcements at this time. Invite you to receive God's blessing. The creator of the stars bless you in your advent waiting. And the long expected savior fill you with life and love. And the unexpected spirit guide you on your journey now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week.